are listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. IELTS Writing Task 2. Hello there, my name is Ben Worthington. In this tutorial, we are going to look at recent Task 2 questions and sample answers. These questions were seen online, they were seen in exams, and they were sent in to us uh, from students who, our students, who have been doing the exams. If you're lucky, maybe you will see the same question on your exam paper, but don't bank on it. Don't rely on it. I mean, it's just a bonus. Ideally, you will be fully prepared and you'll be fully equipped to answer any question that turns up. That's the best way to do it. Okay, before we start, let me just introduce myself. My name is Ben Worthington. I'm from England. I used to struggle teaching IELTS, but then I started interviewing lots and lots of experts, language experts, exam experts, IELTS experts, speaking experts, pronunciation experts, reading experts, any expert I could find, and I still do to improve my knowledge. And then I take that knowledge and I put it in the online course. And this is how I got started with the podcast and how I got started with the Jump to Band 7 or its free IELTS course that we have, and that's at IELTSpodcast.com. Now, um, in this tutorial, we're just going to go through some sample questions, recent ones, and as I said before, usually we are looking at um, recent kind of topics. It goes, um, it's usually topic orientated. So even though, for example, the next question might be about uh, TV entertainment and, and social issues, Okay, the topic is about social issues. Um, it's good to review some of the vocabulary that is related to social issues. Rather than just go narrow, go broad. And likewise, for the second question, uh, we're talking about education, which is a recurring theme. There's usually always a question about education uh, when they update them. Okay, so that's another topic area would that would be worthwhile reviewing especially for vocabulary and then the final one is culture which is again one of those recurring uh, th topics that keeps popping up um, every single uh, year and every single time they batch sorry they update the questions um, but if you go to ieltspodcast.com and put topics or question topics you will see a ton and we've got all the topics covered all of them come with lists of vocabulary and by the way we update our online course with recent questions and with recent topics and when you send in your answer when you send in your essay we reply not only with the feedback so you can improve quicker but also with a model sample essay so you can review it which contains a list of vocabulary. So we've got the, you get the model sample essay, but you also get a list of vocabulary, which all the students love because they can see which vocabulary they can include in their next question about that topic. Let's jump into it. So this is a question seen by one of our students. Some people say that all popular TV entertainment programs should aim to educate viewers about important social issues. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? Now, I, in my notes, I said I'm going to totally agree with this, but uh, then I changed it because it was going to get a little bit too difficult and I found myself repeating. So, um, basically, I came up with two reasons. These are my body paragraph one, body paragraph two. Reason one, uh, social issues such as Black Lives Matter could be forgotten about in a few years. People need reminding. Okay, so let's just go back to the question. Um, TV programs, and look, this is another useful technique, and we teach this in the course, but if you can get into the habit of simplifying the question, it makes it so much easier. In this case, 
TV programs should educate viewers about important social issues. Agree or disagree? Or to what extent do you agree or disagree? So body paragraph one, I'm going to agree. Body paragraph two, I'm going to disagree. And then um, I'll put a summary in the conclusion. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as my cousins may say. Anyway, it's quite straightforward. And in the online course, we go into this in a lot more detail. And it's and we even give you the framework. Once you've simplified the question, taken, chosen your position, and then you've got the framework, and it's quite straightforward. So anyway, reason one, to I totally agree. Paragraph one, sorry, totally agree. Black Lives Matter are important social issues such as, this is important, if we can give an example. Black Lives Matter is a perfect example. It's quite recent. Um, it's probably in the mind of anybody, if anybody doesn't know about Black Lives Matter, where have you been for the last uh, two years, I guess? Um, so anyway, my reason is that the TV programs should educate um, viewers about social issues because recent social issues such as Black Lives Matter could be forgotten about and people may need reminding. Okay? So that's a reasonable argument. Another argument, um, another argument, slightly more technical, but I could say, furthermore, also because it's a recent historical movement, any inaccuracies could be picked up on, rather than left to be fossilized in history. Now I really wanted to use the word fossilized, and it just means um, like a fossil, a dinosaur fossil that we find the old bones or the decomposed body, whatever, and it becomes fossilized, just means it's set in stone. So what I'm saying here is that if we make uh, programs about it, about current social issues, um, then it's less likely uh, to be to contain inaccuracies because because we've recently made it, we can spot. Um, some of the mistakes or avoid some of the mistakes because it's been very recent. So it's an argument to say, yes, we should do this. Okay. And I guess it's more specifically related to Black Lives Matter because it is a recent event. So that would be my argument for, re uh, for body paragraph two, body paragraph, sorry, that would be my argument for body paragraph one. For body paragraph two, I'm going to disagree. Why? I'm going to say, no, we should not. Let's just go back to the question. Double check that we're going to get full points for task response. Go back to the question. I disagree that TV entertainment pro programs should aim to educate viewers about social issues. I disagree. Why? Because they could be dramatized and a false story could be told for TV reasons. Okay, and I've got a relevant, re semi-recent example. Um, okay, what I'm saying here is that what usually happens with TV is that they add some drama that maybe wasn't there for the sake of entertainment. And therefore, it could make the story inaccurate because they're adding drama. Okay, um, for example, the UK and American uh, well, in World War II, it's fact there is a. It's fact that the Russians lost more lives than the Americans and the British. However, it's quite common that the British and the Americans think that they lost the most lives and they sacrificed the most to defeat Nazi Germany in the nineteen forties and fifties. Okay. And this is a start, this is a belief because of um, Hollywood, basically. Okay, so in my in my reason, I could say that there would be drama. It could be dramatized, could give a false story for inter TV entertainment reasons. For example, the UK and American audience generally believe the Allied forces lost the most men in war, when it was actually Russia that lost the most. This leaf. Uh, this belief is mostly is most likely because of Hollywood's narrative. Okay, so you can see I was getting a little bit winded. It's a little bit too long. 
So when you are writing your notes, just make sure you get it crystal clear and you don't have to go in such um, a rant or such a uh, long story about explaining it. When I write my essay, I'll try and find a way just to put that in a more succinct way. Reason two, okay, I mean, one reason is okay, but if we're going for a, a band seven or higher, ideally we're going to put a few reasons in there. Reason two, it's common for two different f fractions to have different factions, sorry, uh, to have different viewpoints on the social issues. This can be because of country propaganda, religion, or other reasons. Making a TV show will only emphasize the difference. Perhaps these social issues should be left to the experts, such as historians, uh, rather than TV producers. Okay. In this one, it could be a little bit sensitive to give a real world example. Okay. Um, so I probably, if I was reorganizing this essay, I would give that one as my first reason. And then I would talk about uh, the dramatizing and a false story and then finish with an example for uh, with f finish with the World War II example okay and then I've got reason one reason two for example and it just makes the essay flow much better rather than have a reason one example reason two no example okay and if you go in I mean, you can put an example for both reasons. Just depends how good you are with your time organization, with your management, how fast you can write, um, and how well you've practiced. Second question. Some people believe the purpose of education should be helping the individual to become useful for society, while others believe it should help individuals to achieve their ambitions. Discuss both sides and give your opinion. Right, let's simplify this question. Education should produce students who are useful for society. Education should help individuals fulfill their dreams. Okay, two arguments there. Why, let's put them in two body paragraphs. Body paragraph one, useful for society. They should learn skills such as medicine, architecture, engineering. There is a good ROI a good return on investment. It's quite straightforward and it's very easy just to invent an example. For example, recent studies showed that um, for every dollar invested in engineering school, the country benefited three over, uh, benefited uh, three dollars, benefited by gaining three dollars over the space of 10 years. Okay, and then I could just easily expand on that body paragraph two may be a little bit um, trickier so let's go into it um, education let's get our position clear crystal clear go back to the question review it education should help individuals achieve their ambitions that's my position here okay um Okay, that's kind of like my heading. Obviously, we're not going to put headings, but I'm going to say, and it's not my position, actually. It's just sort of like the direction or going back to task response. But I'm going to say that I don't agree with this because people's questions can be questionable. Okay, sorry, people's ambitions can be questionable. For example, a student's ambition could be to be, um, could be ridiculous and the school would force to help them. For example, a student might have an ambition to be a criminal <laughs> or a student might have, um, let's see, a student might have the ambition of becoming a juggler, yeah? And now Cambridge University, if that student was enrolled in Cambridge, would have to put all the resources to help that student become a juggler, which just means, you know, uh, throwing f three or four or five balls up in at the same time. It's absolutely preposterous which would be a good word to include in the essay. Um, so here, we can't really, I can use hypothetical examples. I can't really use a real world one, but I can use a hypothetical one to explain my point, and I can use that beautiful conditional language 
um, to demonstrate my point. And I could possibly think of another reason uh, just to add to the argument. At the moment, I can't think of one, but if I was brainstorming, I probably could. Um, so yeah, quite straightforward. Just to summarize, we're going to have body paragraph one. Um, quite straightforward. I agree. S education should help students uh, become useful for society. Skills such as medicine, architecture, engineering, and so on and so forth. Body paragraph two. Um, educational institutions should not help student uh, achieve their ambitions because their ambitions can be questionable and even ridiculous okay and this would probably make for a decent summary of that paragraph um, can help them to a certain extent but uh, education institutions however however education institutions could help students fulfill their ambitions assuming these ambitions help society okay just a nice little kind of like discla um, disclaimer there. Third question. Many people believe that a person's culture is defined by their country of origin, while others believe that it is only a minor influence. Discuss both these views and give your opinion. Body paragraph one. The culture, country of origin, yes, because parents, language, food. This is quite straightforward, okay? A person's culture is defined by their country of origin because they may have parents there who brought them up speaking that language and use, and still um, and, and using the customs. As I said, they'll be speaking the language and they'll probably be preparing the food as well. Okay. Um, second, body paragraph two. I will say that a person's country of origin is a minor factor because there's so much more that makes up the culture of the person, their personal tastes, their origin. For example, they may have fre French parents, but they may have grown up in London, for example. Okay, Or they could have had a trip to Australia once and feel a real connection to the, a real deep connection to the Australian way of life. Uh, and just it might resonate with them more, more so. For example, if an athlete goes to Australia, they'll probably find <laughs> that they are at home because Australians love doing sport, you know? So it's quite, um, there's not a right or a wrong answer, but you do have to explain and develop your answers. So a good way to do this, and Ellen has spoken about this before, and so has Daphne actually, a good way to develop it is just to ask why and then self-answer. Answer it yourself. Why is it such a minor issue? Well, you know, as I just said, you could have grown up in London. That's your country of origin, but your parents were French. OK, so therefore your country of origin might not be, might not have such a big impact as um, as other factors such as parents. OK. And. To give an example, we could easily invent a statistical study. Recent studies show, and then just rephrase, paraphrase what I've just been saying, but in a more academic way. And this is a really valuable skill to have. It can get you out of a lot of problems if you can invent an academic sounding study. And we've got a whole tutorial about this. And we encourage our students to do this um, because it's a, a useful skill, it helps, it ticks lots of boxes. Firstly, you can give real world examples of any argument that you choose within reason, it's got to be realistic. Secondly, you're going to use, uh, if you use our structure, you're going to be using C1 vocabulary, which will help significantly boost your score. And three, it's this versatility. Okay, you can, it just opens up. Uh, the amount of arguments you can take okay and and third yeah and finally this language is kind of universal so I could use this example giving vocabulary in an essay about climate change in an essay about culture in an essay about 
um, gender equality in an essay about education. And how valuable is that? That's very valuable. You've got a good chunk of your essay under control and reduce the risk of losing points. Right, the final question, final question. Let's quickly go through this. More and more people are finding it increasingly important to wear fashionable clothes. Is this attitude to wearing clothes a positive or negative development? It's a negative development because it's a waste of resources. Um, also, these uh, these fashion trends are usually pushed on social media, which can result in a feeling of needing to keep up with the Joneses, okay? N needing to stay fashionable, for example. And I again, as I just mentioned before, six out of seven pupils in high school said that fashion was causing them social anxiety, okay? Just an example there of how to give semi-realistic uh, example that proves your point and develops your answer. Body paragraph two. Um, often fast fashion has questionable sources of materials, okay? Furthermore, usually um, media advertising is needed to change trends and opinions, and this adds more costs to the clothes. Okay. So what actually I might do after looking upon this again, what would be logical? Probably post, put the advertising and social media argument together in body paragraph one, and then put the questionable, questionable sources of materials and waste of resources in body paragraph two. You see, that would make a much more logical um, essay. And there we go. And then, a summary in the conclusion. It's quite straightforward. Now, if you're still struggling with your essays, then go to ieltspodcast.com, click on the banner above. At the moment, we have a special offer for $5 essay corrections. That will not last forever. We might be taking it down soon. It depends how much longer Daphne and Ellen can keep going. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you are struggling, come and get some quick and efficient, cost-effective help. We can give you feedback, we can help you improve, and it's relatively quick as well. So, yep, and also why not sign up to ieltspodcast.com while you're there to get more feedback and help. All the best and good luck with your IELTS preparation. Thank you for listening. IELTSPodcast.com